In this video, we're going to look at how to send time tag data from the SCADA data gateway. For this video, I'll be using an OPC client that's connected to an OPC server, and we've subscribed to a few points, and I'm going to map those points to an IEC 60870-5-104 controlled station or slave component. So the first thing I need to do is create the S104 component. To do that, I can add the TCP channel. Select S104, and I'm just going to name it S104. I'm going to take the default values here. I'll also take the default sector address. And now I need to create data types. Now I want to send time tag data, but if you notice in the data type list, there's no time tag data types here. So what I have to do is select the base type. So I'm going to select T1 for my single point. And I'm also going to create a double point. and a couple of measure ends. I'll do one normalized measure end and one float. So now I've set up the data types on my S104 component. And as I mentioned before, they're all set up with the base type, which does not have a time tag. So now that I've created my data types, I'm going to go ahead and map my data to them for now. The only way to create data in a slave component is by mapping a point from a master component. So in this case, we're going to map from the OPC client to the slave. I'm just going to make my single point IOA100. I'm going to take this next point and I'm going to map that as a double point. I'll just make that IOA 200. Then I'm going to map a measure in to be a normalized value. I'll just make that 300. And then finally, I'll map one of my measure ends to be a float. I'm just going to make that IOA 400. So now we have our data points mapped. I'm going to save the INI file. And I'm going to go ahead and exit the gateway. Now I need to edit that INI file. You can use any text editor. I'm just going to use Notepad. And we want to search for a field with the base type. So for example, for the single point MSPNA underscore time format, or you can just use time. This field sets the time format that will be reported by the SCADA data gateway. For a single point, it defaults to CP56, which is a 56-bit time, which is what we want in this example. Next, I'm going to look for the double point. And again, it already defaulted to the CP56 time. Now I'm going to look for my measure ends. Here's my normalized measure end. Notice that it defaults to no timestamp. So I'm going to change that to be a CP56. And then finally, look for my float measure end. And again, it defaults to no timestamp, and I'm going to change that to a CP56. So now I just need to save this file.
So now, after modifying the INI file, I need to restart the gateway. When the gateway restarts, it should read that INI file. I'm now going to go to my OPC server and begin creating data changes. And now let's bring up a test harness that's connected to the gateway. I've set my test harness to show only event data, since event data should carry timestamps. And now if we pause and look for data, here we have a type ID of 30, single point information with 56-bit time, time tag. I have a type ID 36, measured value short float with 56-bit time tag. I have a type ID 34, a measured value normalized value with 56-bit time tag. and I have a double point information with the 56-bit time tag. So as you can see, the gateway is now reporting data with the 56-bit time tag. So in summary, when you configure your SCADA data gateway, you use the base type, even though it doesn't show a time tag. You create points in a slave component by mapping. You can simply drag and drop points from a master component to the slave. In this case, we dragged them from the OPC client to the appropriate data type. And then if you want to send time tags on points that do not send time tags by default, you need to modify the INI file and set the time tag type to be sent.